We're going to watch all the women through their underwear on the stage. Thank you so very much for being patient with us. We did hear from our meal delivery, and they said they were supposedly thought they were on their way, should have been here by now. But Dr. Austin Fletcher has so much cool stuff for us today that we're going to let him get going. And when the food comes, we'll deliver it to you if you all are okay to be patient like that with us. I've known Austin since he was a little kid. I'm not going to tell you any little kid stories, but I could. Um, he is one of, he is the youngest quantum neurologist in the country. He's a certified, licensed, very good chiropractor. Y'all have probably come across him somewhere along the way. And he's going to share with us some holistic healing ways to keep us healthy, um, mind, body, and spirit. I want to thank First State Bank for sponsoring our program and our lunches today. And I promise you'll get fed before you leave here one way or the other. So be patient and welcome Dr. Fletcher. Everybody hear me? We're good? Perfect. So um, when they asked me to kind of come up here and talk about everything, um, I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? And they said, we'll talk about the body. I'm like, all right, I got you guys. Um, so I just kind of broke everything down into, uh, let's see if this works today. Maybe. It didn't work the other day either. It hates me. <laughs> Guys, somebody's just pushed the slides for me. If anybody out there or Roxanne can fix it, maybe. So my main thing that I wrote, wanted to break everything down into is, does anybody know what to do if they have a problem and they don't want to necessarily go see a doctor and they want to just go try something else? And so I broke down everything into, um, thanks. Uh, Mental, physical, chemical, and spiritual healing. Those are the four major types of, uh, or major portions of the body. So I figured, why not talk about each of them and break down what you can do naturally for each of these sections. So, is that is this going to work? Can I see the quick? Oh, yeah, here. So the first time, the first thing I brought up was physical healing. This is anything as far as trauma, um, Mo muscles, bones hurting. That was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> muscles, bones hurting. Um, most every time you think about one of these things, it's going to be because you've hurt yourself in some manner or way. And so the main two things for the medical world are going to be surgical treatments, artificial breathing, and orthotics. For me, my world in natural medicine, I prefer somebody to start with a chiropractor, a physical therapist, and or massage therapy. So what are each of those? chiropractic, of course, what I do, I use physical manipulation to adjust the nervous system. So specifically in my practice, I use a technique called quantum neurology. Quantum neurology is a nervous system rehabilitation technique. So what I do is I sit down and I test every single one of your muscles going up through your body and their neurologic integrity to them. So does that, that then will tell me, okay, so this muscle is not functioning. Okay. Why is it not functioning? Is it due to a structural error in the muscle, the joint, the bone, or is it further up along that nerve pathway? Is there something going on in the back? Is there something going on with the other nerves that are coming into that area of the back that are actually sending different messages from your brain down into that leg? So it can go anything, it's go as far as anything into um, nutritional deficiencies, organ-related issues, brain-related issues, anywhere along that neurologic pathway from top back down to bottom there can be an issue and that's where my specialty lies. So, anybody not know what an adjustment is? I figured we we're pretty good on that. Perfect. Um, so then I break down the nervous system. So you have the parasympathetic and sympathetic. So parasympathetic and sympathetic, you've always heard of fight or flight, right? So your sympathetic is gonna be, I have to fight the bear and or I have to run away from it fast. These are all a bunch of different things that are affected when the sympathetic nervous system is activated. And then parasympathetic nervous system is rest, digest, and heal. And this is almost always what I'm trying to activate when I'm working on somebody. I want their organs to start working and I want their body to start relaxing and I want them to be able to rest. I want them to heal. And so um, when we look at the actual spine, 
the sympathetics are all going to be through your rib cage and a little bit through your neck. And those are going to be your main nerves that are going to your muscles and slightly to the organs that are going to increase activity, but pull blood away from the body. Then you got parasympathetic, which is coming mostly from your brainstem and the top of your neck, and then also down lower in your sacral area. And that's going to then lower your your blood pressure, get more of your blood going to your central or to your central part of your body and then up to your brain so that you, you can actually consciously think about what you need to do for yourself. Uh, I don't know what I did. Uh, there we go. Sensory versus motor. So these are the different types of nerves that you have in your body. So your sensory first off is going to be how you feel things. So pain, temperature, pressure, all those different things that your body can truly feel. And food is here. Congratulations. Um, they're going to hand it out to you guys. Um, and so just as you're feeling, okay, are you getting the proper input to your brain? Do you know what pain, temperature, pressure, all that feels like? And then we go over to your motor nerves, which is going to be the back out nerves saying, okay, I touched the hot stove. Now I'm going to pull away. So you felt it and then your body reacted to it. This is the different parts of your uh, brain. The frontal lobe is going to be more of your memory core. Your uh, parietal lobe is where you're going to feel all that sensory and have all that motor control. Your temporal lobe, which is the purple, is going to be where you hear and uh, interpret languages and also speak. The back of your brain is going to be your vision. And then the cerebellum is you knowing where you're at in space and what you are doing. Then this is your cranial nerve. So these are going to be your special senses. So when you're in school, elementary school, you learn smell, taste, hearing, all that. These are the nerves and where they come out in your brain to give you those sensations. And I do work with a lot of those. So I'm actually able to help people with visual hearing, um, taste stuff. So a lot of people that have like COVID, uh, lack of smell and taste or COVID brain, stuff like that. These are gonna be more the nerves that I'm gonna work with for those kinds of situations. Then we talk about physical therapy. So the difference between chiropractic and physical therapy, we're both working with the muscle and bones. Physical therapy is going to focus more on the exercises. Now, chiropractic, we can do physical therapy in our offices. That's fine. But I would rather you guys go to the professionals that do this every day. Um, and then the physical therapists also can do adjustments. Um, I mean, they've trained in it. They don't do a whole lot of it. So I would actually leave that more up to the chiropractors as far as the treatments for that. Um, because we're going to be more specific and we have multiple ways of adjusting things other than just the, okay, let's just grab and pull and yank and see what happens, all right? Uh, and then you have massage therapy. And I figured most people know what massage therapy is, but it's working the muscles to try to flush out um, any toxins uh, in the muscular tissue. So like when you work out, you feel that lactic acid, they're going to get in there and they're going to flush that out. They're going to get those trigger points to release, which is going to have a lot of calcium and stuff like that that's making those muscles contract. Their basic job is to flush your nervous system, or not your nervous system, your muscular system. Then we have mental health. So in your medical world, you have psychiatry, surgical corrections, where they actually go into your brain and, you know, you see the horror movies where they go in and they actually do the ice pick lobotomies and stuff like that. Um, and then different drugs and medications for it. Natural medicine, we have psychotherapy, counseling, hypnosis, Neuroemotional technique, which is something that I do, aromatherapy, and then supplementation and diet. So psychotherapy and counseling, again, this is something that a lot of people know about. Um, just going in and talking to somebody about your problems mentally and physically. Um, and oftentimes these people can actually help you with coping mechanisms in order to start making your mind not revert to the fight or flight symptoms again and bring you back down and calm your nervous system and get you to think logically is their goal. Hypnosis, this is fun. I actually wanted to take a class on this, but only two people signed up for it, so they canceled it. Um, but hypnosis, again, it's something very common, but they actually put you into a subconscious mind frame and they take your, uh, take suggestive um, sentences and they'll tell you, okay, why are you feeling this way? They can help you with, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm smoking or I'm addicted to smoking. Well, if you get into that deepest portion of your brain and you get to understand that you don't need to feel that addiction or you don't feel pleasure from that addiction anymore, that's what this is going to do for you. 
Um, other things that you can do with hypnosis are help somebody through an emotional trauma. So if they have a panic attack every time they think about their accident, they can go in and say, okay, well, the accident actually didn't happen the way you think it did. And they can actually alter your mindset so you don't go into those panic attacks. Behavioral modification, again, that's going to be your, your addiction, breaking, um, can help with weight loss and self-improvement. Subconscious behaviors, so kids that have neurologic tics and they can't stop wiggling something, or if you have a, like kids in school that always have to be like moving or touching people or talking to people, again, this is something that can help with that. Um, pain relief, you can literally picture in your mind pain leaving from your body and it'll actually start to leave your body. And if you go into your subconscious mind, you can actually completely shut off pain. One of my professors from UNK when I went to school there was a uh, psychology professor and he was able to completely go through his entire surgical procedure on his abdomen by just meditating and saying that he wasn't feeling any of the pain. So the power of hypnosis and suggestion and control of your brain is an amazing tool. And the last one that a lot of people don't know, and I don't know that we have any in the, the state of Nebraska, but you can actually be hypnotized to feel no pain during your labor. That's super cool. Now, the thing that I do in my office is called neuroemotional technique. And so what this is, is um, in Ch ancient Chinese acupuncture, they actually mapped out your entire body. And I'm going to get into this um, with the essential oils when I talk about those two. Um, but each organ holds a specific set of emotions. So when you go and you get nervous or uh, you, you're anxious about something, you always feel like the butterflies and the giddy stuff in your stomach, right? And then if you're, nerd, or if you're uh, in love, you feel your heart pounding. If you're um, angry, a lot of people start to drink. They're actually trying to calm their liver. If you're depressed, you start to feel that heaviness in your chest. All those things have been mapped out by the ancient Chinese people. And they were able to start working on those emotions by calming those uh, autonomic responses um, in their nervous system through the needling. And so what these, this technique did was then took it a step further. So I used the muscle testing that I do. So holding somebody's arm strong, knowing that this muscle works. And then I sit down and I have them contact their frontal cortex of their head. What this does is then tells the body, okay, yep, yeah, uh, we're working in the emotional core of our brain. And from there, I then touch each of their organs. And if they go weak in their arm, when, they're, when I'm touching one of their organs, I know, okay, they're having stress in that organ. And it probably is due to that emotional trauma. And we can actually then sit down and ask them questions about it. And their muscle will answer the questions for me. So, okay, is this coming from the material world? Is it money, career, jobs, finances? Is it love? Is it family that you came from, family that you have now, friends or family? And then there's also you in this world. And so what hats do you wear? Are you the doctor? Are you the student? Are you the mother? Are you the brother? And you can actually break down exactly what's emotionally is going on with something, somebody based off of this technique and help them to not go into a repetitive, habituated pattern that breaks them down in that situation, thus causing them pain and or organ dysfunction or even um, just emotional trauma. Um, then we get into the aromatherapy, which in the back, uh, in the lobby area, I did put a uh, pamphlet out there that looks like this. And so I use uh, essential oils for a lot of my people that are having emotional pain. So you can actually sit down and they actually have gone into um, the brain mapping where they actually put all the probes on your head and they watch what happens with blood activity when you're feeling certain emotions. And they've actually been able to take the oils that are over here and prove that when somebody's feeling these emotions, if they're smelling this and all they have to do is smell it, it'll actually start to alter their brain chemistry and turn blood on to the other areas of the brain that counteract those feelings, which is super, super cool. Um, the other things that you can do with essential oils, obviously, is take them internally to help you with any systemic issues you're having. So I use a lot of oils for liver detoxing, um, stomach cramping. I mean, you name it, there's an oil for it for something. And if you need help with that, you can always talk to me or give me a call and I'll have, happily discuss any of your stuff. Um, and then the other way is you can work, use them topically. So people that use like icy hot and stuff like that, that's almost always essential oils that they put into a lotion that you're then putting on your body to help calm and cool and relieve pain in those areas. Uh, and then the last thing for mental stuff is your diet and supplementation. So 
we all know you are what you eat, right? And so um, it can really affect you neurologically because the bacteria in your guts feed off of that food. And then they actually supply your body with what we call neurotransmitters, which are little message signaling things um, that then go up into your bloodstream and to your brain and can actually alter your brain chemistry. So the cool experiment they did um, back in, I think, the 90s was they took all of the psychotic patients in the psych ward. They removed all of their intestines, like everything that was in their intestines, completely power washed them out basically, and then replanted somebody else's bacteria in those people's bodies. And 90% of those patients actually got better neurologically and were able to get out of their mental psychosis by fixing their gut bacteria. So if you choose not to feed those gut bacteria and you give them healthy foods, fruits, vegetables, and we'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about chemical stuff, they will start to die. They'll kill off those bad bacteria and you'll supplement your good bacteria and your body will actually neurologically thank you for that. <laughs> All right. Then we get into chemical healing. So in the medical world, again, that comes down to oops, pharmaceutical drugs. Oh, gosh. <laughs> pharmaceutical drugs and chemical radiation. And then for natural medicine world, proper diet and supplementation. We're already on diet, so let's talk about it. So this is the traditional food pyramid. I hate it. It's not super great. We all know grains are bad for us. Fats, yeah, you need a little bit of them, but honestly, you want more fats from your nuts um, and stuff like that. So, um, my biggest thing is really think about what you're eating. Um, cut back on your high protein stuff. So a lot of people like the keto diets right now. If you cannot go 100% keto, please do not go on that diet. That diet will spike your blood pressure and your cholesterol levels and give you a heart attack easily, especially if you're already overweight, if you do not follow it 100% of the tea. If you do, it's great. It'll help you with heart conditions. It'll help with all this stuff. But when you start to mix in those grains and your body starts to create inflammation from those grains, you're going to be tanked. Um, and that's another thing with bad diets. I'm just not a big fan of bad diets. Um, just eat healthy. You know, the key thing, lots of fruits and vegetables, little bits of protein. Dairy, again, is a very inflammatory um, food for the body. And grains are very inflammatory. And you do need fats, but you need good fats. You need your omega-3s and your omega-6s. So those are the key things that I like you guys to pick up from this. Again, if you have questions, always ask. Supplementation. So when somebody is truly so deficient in nutrients, so they're, they're actually having a physical ailment because they're not getting enough of a certain nutrient or their body cannot process a certain nutrient, there are certain genetic defects that will actually cause you to have um, uh, dietary um, restraints. And so then you get into supplementation and that's going to be again going to an expert. So Mary Lou Block up at the hospital, um, a great, great resource for nutritional supplementation. Me, uh, any of your physical therapists again. Um, and you know, you can talk to your doctor about a lot of the, but they're going to usually try to go down the medical route before they'll go down the nutritional route. So a lot of people ask me, well, what do I look for when I'm looking for a nutritional supplement? And these are my best guidelines for you. Um, anything's better than nothing. If you are truly nutrient deficient, get on a multivitamin. Get on, if I tell you you need something, you can't necessarily afford something that's a little bit better quality, go to Walmart, get yourself that supplement. Um, but then look at your labels because not always is the supplement you're buying is the thing that you need in it. Sometimes like Nutrition House and stuff like that will have supplements that say it's, this is what it is, but it's actually a bunch of herbs and stuff like that that just are supposed to stimulate your body's ability to absorb it. And if you need it, you actually need not only the stuff to help you absorb it, but also the nutrient itself. Um, extra things to add to that, if you can avoid synthetics, um, which is going to be chemically created compounds, try to go organic if you can. Plant-based is going to be best. Um, if you don't know if it's going to be a good supplement for you, you can always go to reviews for that product, either at their website, go to Google. I would, I would have to go to Amazon because there's usually better and funnier, uh, uh, reviews on those websites. And then I always kind of say, if you think it's, it's something you need, don't buy the cheapest version, 
Don't go out and spend the most money on the expensive version. Buy something about in the middle and you're probably gonna get what you, what you paid for. And then try to avoid, again, those big companies that are usually selling the same thing, but they put a different net label on it. So like your Pretandum, um, your, I don't know, there's so many of them. Um, but yeah, so make sure that you're just getting a quality product. Some of those products are really great, but you don't need to go spend that much money. You can usually find it for a little bit cheaper somewhere else. Um, yeah, cool. Then this is the fun section for me, spiritual healing. In the medical world, I mean, there's not really much. Sometimes you'll have a practitioner that'll pray with you, um, but they are very, very scientific minded. There's not really a whole lot of room for God when, they, when they're trying to figure out what's wrong with you surgically. And I'm not saying that they're not, they're not going to do anything for you. Just even the thought of them wanting to help you is going to help you. But there are lots of different things that we can do in the natural world to help you with uh, spiritual healing. Your spirit is basically what controls your body, right? So knowing that if you can heal your spirit and your body and your mind are synced, then you're obviously you can heal yourself a lot better with your consciousness. So the first one I talk about is prayer in general. So any religion that you go through, um, even the bad ones that some people like associate to negative stuff like the Church of Satan, all of them believe that prayer works and all of us know that prayer works. There's actually a really cool video and I tried to find it, I cannot find it anywhere, um, of a group of doctors in India and this lady had a, has a giant tumor on one of her adrenal glands. And all they did was, was they were chanting in, um, in, or in Indian language, I don't know exactly which one it was, already healed, already better. And as they chanted, they were doing a live uh, ultrasound video of this tumor. And they li you literally watched this tumor go from about yay big, shrinking to about this big on the screen. And it took them about 10 minutes of just praying over this person's body for them to actually be healed. So prayer is an amazing tool for healing people. And, you know, people take it for granted. You know, you always say, I'll pray for you, but do you truly take that time and then send a message to somebody and to God or your God, whatever, and actually say, can you please send good healing to this person? I would love for them to be better. Try it. You'll find great results, I promise. Um, and then oftentimes you'll go to like a church or something like that. So they'll have uh, different rituals and stuff like that that you can do too. Um, so like they bless your throats in, in the Catholic church, um, Indian religion, they focus a lot on your chakras and stuff like that. Meditation, all those different rituals, very helpful as well. Reiki. Um, I used to have a Reiki practitioner in my office and she still does work in town. You just kind of got to get a hold of her. Her name is Cassie Dins, uh, Din, Dinslagi, I think. That's how you pronounce her last name. But um, she works at the vet clinic now. But Reiki is an energy healing, um, basically, again, going back to that prayer form. So they sit over your body and they try to basically pray over different parts of your body, healing you in different areas. And um, they actually will actually try to call in the Holy Spirit or whatever they're working with. And um, it's amazing. It, usually I feel so relaxed. I fall asleep on the table. I actually feel mental clarity almost immediately after the treatments. It's a really cool technique. And again, if you want more information on some of these things, we'll have a question saying at the end, and I can answer some questions. Um, and then these are all a bunch of different other types of healing energy techniques. So Qigong, again, uh, Asian descent. It is a exercise program that is designed for breathing into specific organs. So instead of your normal breathing, where you breathe from your chest or from your diaphragm, they start pumping their abs over those organs to try to increase blood flow, get lymphatic drainage going. So, oh, sorry. Um, so that when your body is trying to heal itself, it's getting the nutrients it needs and it's taking the toxic stuff away. Um, and then again, they're asking for prayer, meditation, their, their gods to heal them while they're doing those things. Sound healing, vibrational healing. You often, often see this a lot with people that work with uh, crystals. They say they're vibrational crystals. Uh, the vibrations of the crystals heal different aspects of different things. They have um, tuning ports. You'll see people holding tuning ports on their bodies as though, and I think of that more neurologically, is you're actually asking the nerves to wake up and you're touching them and using sound as a transmission of sending neurologic impulses to the brain. 
Um, other ways people do it are they'll take like Tibetan singing bowls where they roll the um, the pendulum over the top of the bowl and it starts to vibrate like if you're doing a wine glass. Um, and all of those are going to be trying to increase your your vibrational energy. So all of us are technically um, light beings. Uh, the only reason that you can see me is because light waves are hitting me, bouncing off me, floating through the air, and then hitting your eyes. My light is reflecting back off me into your guys' eyes, so you get an interpretation of who and what I am. And so knowing that, you know that you are truly only vibration, and everything that comes off of you is light. So if you actually try to enhance that light by adding more vibration to it and increasing its frequency or its amplitude or slowing it down, whatever you're trying to do, because when you mix frequencies and waves, they change, right? So the goal of the different sound healings and energy healings is to try to balance those vibrational waves. Laying out of hands, again, that's a form of prayer, just asking the body to be healed by itself. You don't even have to actually uh, ask God or anybody to do it. If you yourself mentally are just asking for a person to be healed and you're you're putting intent into it, all it takes is intent, you're going to start to heal people. Shamanic healing is traditional Native American healing. They use uh, chanting, drums, stuff like that to call their gods and um, basically uh, send that healing energy. They use a lot of animals as representations for what they're doing. Um, and then also they use a lot of sage um, and burning of stuff, which actually they found burning sage in your home will actually kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria that are airborne, which is super cool. Um, meridian therapies, that gets back into acupuncture stuff. So um, using needle therapies, um, and so the best way I can tell you how acupuncture works is so you have energy channels running through your entire body. We actually can measure specific points over all the acupuncture points that say there is this much voltage in that area. And if you move from that spot, there's no voltage there, but there is voltage as soon as you move back over that spot. So what the Chinese did, and they didn't realize they were doing it at the time, is they were going out and fighting wars with the Mongolians. And all of a sudden, this person got stabbed in the leg here. Well, yeah, cool. My leg hurts. I got stabbed there. I arrow got shot there, but my stomach pain went away. And they started seeing more and more of these repetitive injuries, and they were always writing it down. And somebody actually compiled that information together and said, okay, well, we know that if we stimulate that spot, either with a needle or if we poke it, prod it, that actually started to heal different conditions in the bodies. And then over thousands of years, they developed acupuncture, and that was their main form of medical treatment for years and years, and it worked great. And so activating that energy flow, allowing your body to communicate with itself is the main premise on those therapies. Um, crystal healing, I kind of got into that a little bit, but crystal healing is super cool as well. So all of your computer chips, um, electronics run off of memory, right? And the memory is made of the quartz crystals usually and or gold. And so the really cool thing is, so now we know that these crystals can hold memories. Well, why can't they hold a vibrational memory? So people actually will take crystals, put their intent, their thoughts. So again, it comes back down to that prayer and that idea of that vibrational energy, putting it into those objects, which will hold that memory. And then they will vibrate at that frequency until you change it from whatever you want it to be to something else. And so that's a really cool way to give a gift to somebody. If you want them to heal, you say, you pray over that crystal, you ask it to heal somebody, and then you give that gift of that crystal to them. And as long as it's near them, it's going to constantly have that intent of healing energy entering their bodies. Um, theta healing. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of binaural beats, but it's where you put two different uh, headphones in your ears and um, they're both playing different vibrational frequencies. And so it's actually, they've shown brain mapping again, where your brain activity might be more left brain or more right brain. But when you start playing these frequencies into your mind, it starts balancing. And again, puts you into that parasympathetic that we talked about before uh, mindset that allow you that will allow you to start healing a little bit faster and better. Pranic healing, again, is a different type of prayer healing. Um, that's going to be more uh, Middle Eastern and Indian, kind of that in-between area, um, healing and praying technique. Um, and it's just a, there's a specific person that will help you with different yoga positions. And as you're doing those yoga positions, it's going to be activating those channels of those meridians to help stimulate healing while doing different chants. 
And then quantum healing, I talked about quantum neurology, which is what I do, which is activating the nervous system. Quantum healing is you thinking yourself of being in a different reality. And so it comes down then to a little bit of hypnosis, but you're, you're trying to change your thought process that you are not this person, you are this person. You are both the same person, but you'd rather be this person without this situation. So one, one example would be, um, I want to be, or I have cancer and I don't want to have cancer. So I'm going to pretend that I am Austin without cancer over here. And I'm going to live my life believing that I am this Austin. And eventually my body may revert itself and start thinking properly and say, yeah, I am this Austin. I don't have cancer. And sometimes that'll take those diseases away. It's super, super cool. No idea how it works other than brain control and the brain controls everything. So super cool. Uh, my office, obviously, is the remedy. Most of you guys know this. This is my beautiful office staff. I have Alicia, Steph, and Christy. Christy is a nurse practitioner. Um, she tries to treat people as holistically as she can. We try to get people off their medicines. We don't want them to be on medicines for their whole life. So why are you having those issues? Um, she also does a lot of IV nutrition stuff now. She just got into that. And so um, you can come in and you can get uh, an IV bag that's full of all the vitamins and minerals that your body needs. Um, a lot of times you'll see people like in movies where they get hangovers and they go get the hangover bag. It's the same concept. You're giving the body everything it needs to heal itself in a nutritional package. Um, and then uh, some of the other stuff that we do in our office uh, that's more natural is we do have an infrared sauna. Um, which is going to give you a red light and ultra or a red light and infrared light therapy, which is going to be similar to the, like sitting in the sun. And so it's going to increase your vitamin D. It's going to help you detox your body. So any heavy metals and stuff like that that's in your body, it's going to actually leave your system as you're sitting in there and sweating all that toxic stuff off. Um, then you have the detoxing foot baths on top of that. So we have, uh, you put your feet in water and there's certain salts in it. And then we put electrodes in there and based off of the ionization uh, in your body, which I don't know, most of you probably don't know about osmosis, but you increase the positive and negative. So if we're making the water more uh, negative, the positive ions, which are the bad things in your bodies um, are gonna slowly be pulled out of your body and go into the water, but you have now a solution and you need to balance the two. So the negative ions are gonna flip flop until they are positive and negative equal on both sides. And the ne negative stuff is like free energy for your body. Um, so you can do more activity and stuff like that. And the positive stuff is gonna be like heavy metals, uh, lymphatic drainage stuff, uh, blood clots. I mean, there's hundreds of different things that this stuff can pull out of your body. And some of those foot baths when we have people doing them, I mean, they stink. They're disgusting. You'll see sometimes worms in them. Um, and so it's kind of a cool thing. Um, what else do we have? We have, not right now, but we have a massage therapist in our office, Holly Mites. Um, she's currently out after our next surgery. Um, yeah, and we're looking to expand into a nutritional therapist at some point here soon too. So that's the remedy. And then I left it open for any questions that anybody may have. Right? Anybody? Yep. Austin, uh, I visited your clinic and you said you uh, did not do Medicare. So this is a big one that comes into our office a lot. So because we chose to be a cash-based clinic, um, our Medicare, um, for me personally, the federal government does not view chiropractors as physicians. State governments do. And so what happens in that situation is that I have to be a part of Medicare no matter what. Christy, as a physician, was able to opt out so she can see Medicare patients for a cash fee. I still have to submit no matter what Medicare billing for a Medicare patient if they come into my office. And so what that means is I either have to pay somebody to have pointless job knowing that what I do specifically because my my technique is different than any other chiropractor so I know it's going to get denied and I have to submit that three times every time a Medicare bill comes to you it gets and it gets denied you have to try it three times and then they can pay you so I came down to do I pay somebody to have a pointless job or do I take Medicare 
And um, if I take Medicare, my prices are going to have to go up because I have to match Medicare pricing and I have to charge every single person for everything I do. So instead, I wanted to keep my prices down, charge a one base fee, and I do everything that I know how to do for that fee. And then I don't have to worry about going, okay, well, I have to do electrotherapy on you and I have to upcharge you now and for $20 and another $20. And then our bill starts to become into the $150 to $200 range. And I, it just doesn't sit well for me. And so I didn't want to take Medicare in that situation. And so, um, and, I, and I could technically see Medicare patients, but if they want their complaints to be active and submitted, um, it's just a lot, a lot of work for us. And we can't afford to have that many more employees if we want to keep our prices down. I guess the real the other question was, the follow-up question would be, uh, I can or cannot walk in and pay cash. So whether you come in and pay cash or not, I still have to submit for you. That's, that's where the problem comes. So I'm going to have to submit those three things again, even if you come in. And unfortunately, if I don't, uh, if I do see you and I don't submit, it's fraud and I get fined about $10,000 per Medicare patient that I would see. Okay, so um, I, I know we've covered a lot of information, mind, body, and spirit. Lots of different things um, come up to mind, um, but lots of people call you the voodoo doctor, including myself. Um, and what I want to know is, based on, on what you've been saying today, there's a lot of science behind this. So how do you respond to someone who says you're the voodoo doctor? <laughs> so I usually go into, okay, if they're, they're just saying, kidding me, I'm like, yeah, I am, but for sure. But if they, they truly believe that what I do is quackery, I then sit down with them and I say, okay, so let's, let's explain this in a neurologic aspect. And I, I go through the, the quantum neurology and I explain it how I'm testing their nerves. And yeah, it may look like I'm just touching different spots in your body. And you're like, oh, wow, my leg got 10 times stronger when you just barely brushed my arm. Well, yeah, you did. This is the neurologic reflex arc that happens because of that. And I explained to them then how neurologically it works. And then if we get into some weirder stuff, like some of the emotional testing and stuff like that, again, it has a very, very neurologic based explanation. And I just kind of go through all those explanations of how that stuff works. And I could give you lectures on, on lectures on how all that stuff works, but it would probably go over most of your guys' heads. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So what other questions from the room are there? I know he's covered a lot of topics. Anything you'd like to know? Yes, over here. So she's asking if I do acupuncture. Um, I do not do acupuncture. So it's a whole nother series of classes and you have to have like 800 hours worth of um, training. Um, and uh, so uh, I haven't taken acupuncture, but I can do acupressure. So when I'm working on somebody, I'll actually go in and I just stimulate the nerves either with my hand or I have an electric device that I'll put over that area or there's little beads and stuff that you can put over those areas to stimulate different things. Okay, other questions? What if you're somebody um, here today that has a chronic sciatic problem? <laughs> um, you know, when I typically go to a chiropractor, I think you're gonna crack me and, you know, do a lot with my back if that's the issue. But mm -hmm. can you tell me, are there other things that you might attack with that chronic problem? So, it, it really, I mean, every, sorry, that weirdly cut out. Everybody's specifically different. So I may have four or five, up to 15 different low back pain complaints come in with sciatic or running down their leg, and every single one of them has a different issue. So um, like I was talking about before, it could be, yeah, structurally your bones are out of place back here. Um, and again, it comes down to what, whatever I test for as far as muscular stuff on whether the brain tells me, yeah, that's for sure the injury is the, the low back pain, the muscle that's coming from that back. Or is it coming from, so if you're at the lowest portion of your back, that could be a sexual organ issue. So are you having an, an issue with maybe like a hernia? Are you having an issue with um, sexual dysfunction of any form? Um, for women, are you having menstrual cramps that time? your time of the month is, is your brain sending so much neurologic information from your organs that it is spilling in your spinal cord and your brain over into 
the motor aspect and the sensory aspect of your body for your muscles. And so your brain is confused and thinks, oh, the muscle and the organ hurts. So I'm just going to send all the pain and everything into the back muscles or into the leg or whatever. Um, because I don't know, I can't distinguish which one's which. And so sometimes I have to go in there and I have to fix the organ problem before the back pain will go away. Um, and again, it could come down to an emotional issue. Are they, is it, is it a trauma related thing? Are they constant, really, constantly reliving a injury or a trauma that happened to them and their brain just doesn't know how to get out of that repetitive um, glitch that, that just keeps cycling. And so, I mean, there's so many different avenues that you can take to heal that part. Yes, I'm always going to use chiropractic as my main form of treatment. Um, and I, and most of the time that spot does have to be straightened on top of that other part of that injury. But unless you strengthen the other part to it, that, that situation can keep failing and you'll keep having back pain. Very cool. I'm very fascinated. Um, I'll give you one last chance. Anybody else have a question out there? Yes, go ahead. So it's awesome and a little overwhelming all the different avenues of healing that you talked about. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all your wisdom and your sharing. If you could give one general piece of advice to people on how to live their best lives, maybe specifically going into the winter season, what would you uh, eat healthy. I mean, again, you are what you eat. Um, it's going to come down to, do you have the nutrients that your body needs in order to perform the functions that you need to do? And nutrition is very, very important. It's so often neglected, especially in the United States diet. Well, I want to take a moment to just appreciate the time you've taken and lots of um, information you've given us. So please help me in thanking Austin for being here today. We do have one power lunch left in 2021, and that will be um, on how life is often puzzling, uh, presented by Jill Boyd. So I hope you'll come back on December 8th, invite some friends, bring people with you. It'll be very inspirational, I know, as we um, finish out the year. Also, we are in the process of planning our 2022 power lunches, so be watching through the Chamber newsletters and on social media and other methods that we will be having that released in the newspapers and all of that coming up soon. So be watching for 2022, come back in December. And again, thank you for being here today and being patient with the lunch. Have a good day. Also, uh, like I said before, the papers for those neurologic, uh, emotional essential oils are on one of the back tables in the lobby. If you guys want some and some business cards back there too. Thank you guys. Thank <laughs> you.